cancer. There's a new study in the scientific journal Nature, and in it, they give us the strongest evidence yet that cold exposure, like I'm doing right now in my porch, will inhibit the growth of tumors. There's been lots of papers with hypotheses about this, but what these researchers did was implant tumors in mice. Control group, experimental group. They kept the control group at 30 degrees C, and they put the experimental group 4 degrees C. And the experimental group lived longer, the tumors grew slower. And why is that? They did a series of very clever experiments that demonstrated it was the activation of brown fat in the experimental mice. The brown fat was sucking up all the glucose out of the bloodstream, and guess what? Cancer needs glucose to metabolize. You can read more about it. Thomas Seafried, probably the world's most eminent scientist on cancer as a metabolic disease. Not a genetic disease. According to Seafried, the metabolic disorder happens first and then the damage to the DNA. And something like over 70% of cancer cells require glucose to metabolize. So one of the worst things you can do for your cancer risk is eat too many carbohydrates, become insulin resistant, live with elevated glucose levels, and there's lots of good epidemiological data on this. But this new paper, this new paper is so robust it shows that the cold exposure that activates your brown fat and clears glucose from your bloodstream inhibits the growth of tumors. I've gone through this whole book by Seafried, Cancer is a Metabolic Disease. He never once mentions cold exposure. This paper is potentially revolutionary, except that people have suspected this for a long time. It just doesn't get any attention from the NIH or from the National Cancer Institute because it goes against radiation, drugs, surgery, and the standard allopathic treatments for cancer. What CIPRI does go into is ketones and ketosis. There's a couple of good papers that show ketone bodies in vitro, uh, that is, in the test tube, in the lab, will inhibit the growth of cultured up tumors. And so Seafried and some colleagues did a couple of studies where they used exogenous ketones to inhibit the growth of tumor cells in the body. Imagine that, eating the ketones increases ketone levels in your bloodstream and the ketones in your bloodstream inhibit the growth of tumor cells. Seafried doesn't talk about cold exposure, and the cold exposure study by Secchi et al., it doesn't talk about ketones. But when you put the two together, you come up with a powerful explanation, the most convincing evidence yet for why some of the people we know who use deliberate cold exposure, like Dean Hall, reversed or resolved their incurable cancers. Because cold exposure clears glucose from your bloodstream to starve those tumor cells, and it's the fastest way to produce endogenous ketones. Two mechanisms, evidently unknown to two eminent leading cancer research teams, and yet we put them both together in Morosco Forge read more about it in an article we've posted in our journal.